So hello and welcome back to another video guys. Now that's right, today I am reviewing the New Year's Day special episode of Doctor Who. I am pretty sure on IMDb at the minute they list this under series 12, but I'm guessing when the DVD Blu-ray box set comes out in a it'll be over a year, but for series 13 once that's said, I'm pretty sure it'll be at the start of that. So maybe it's the first episode of series 13 or it's the end of series 12. I don't know. But um, yeah, that's right. Today I, I wanted to come on and talk about this because I've got a lot of things to say about it. And um, before I get started, I'm going to be honest with you, this review is going to be mostly negative. I was not a fan of the episode. Now, I know some people are going to come at me like, uh, you, you went into this ready to not like it because I haven't been very positive about the Chris Chibnall era so far. And I didn't. I was, I, I had, <laughs> I saw that Chris Chibnall wrote the episode and I, I've not enjoyed his writing style at all so far. So... I went into it optimistic, but ready to get another episode I didn't enjoy. And I'm pleased I did that, because I I got an episode I didn't enjoy again. I'm, I'm sort of at the point now where I'm going into it with low expectations, where if it surprises me, I think I'll be really happy. Which happened a couple times throughout Series 2. The Jadoon episode surprised me. I was ready to not enjoy that one, and it was really good, and I, I ended up having a really good time with it. So it does happen where occasionally an episode of Sneak Through, and I'll be like, yeah, no, that really, really, I really found it enjoying, like the one when they are in that mansion, and the Cyber Man showed up. It does happen. Unfortunately, what we got here was um, something which I wasn't a fan of. So as I say, if you're ready, if you love the episode, and you're ready just to take a crap on me, because I didn't like it, fair enough. But hey, I'm going to tell you my points as to why I think this episode was pretty bad. And if you want to acknowledge and accept them, great. But if you've already hit that dislike button, great. <laughs> I guess that's all I can do. Anyway, so uh, Revolution of the Daleks. Yeah, um, as I say, I was mentally prepared not to like it. And um, yeah, the, this episode had a lot going for it for a start. Um, the trailer looked fun. The trailer was very good. It was very well cut. Um, uh, the effects looked fun. Um, we had the Daleks back, which is great for me. I love the Daleks whenever they're on screen. And I'd seen behind the set photos where we were getting the bronze ones back because I love the bronze ones. I, I, you know, the the one which we saw in Revolution, while it looked cool, it was nice to see a different take on the Daleks. It still didn't look as good as the bronze ones. I wanted the bronze ones back and we, we I knew I was getting them back. So it was like, yep, OK, this is going to be good. Uh, John Barrowman is back reprising his role properly this time. I say properly, I mean, he was in Series 12, but it was uh, so shoehorned into tease this special. But we knew we were getting him for a large chunk of this episode, um, which was... I, I love John Barrowman as Captain Jack. He's so good, so charismatic. And then we had the Doctor separated from the three companions, which I thought would be really interesting to see how each of them um, do on their own, with the Doctor and then the three companions. So... All of the things which I was really looking forward to, I didn't get much of. Um, the Doctor reunites with the Companions pretty quick. Jack was... He was really good. He was good. John Barrowman can play the shit out of that role. He's really good. But in terms of him interacting with the Doctor, there really wasn't much of it. And the Daleks were once again barely on screen till two-thirds of the way the episode and I remember watching this with my friend and uh, Ryan who does the podcast with me and he looked over to me when one of the Dalek aliens the, the, the you know the, the the Dalek without the case got on to one of the characters backs and went if we're going to spend another episode when a Dalek is out of its shell for like 80% of the ep um, episode I'm not going to be happy and I mean we did eventually get there we got more Dalek action in this one than Revolution or resolution, sorry, I think. Um, but yeah, I think, all of that aside, if the story was really good and the dialogue was great and the acting was really good, I think I still could have lived with it. It wasn't, you know, it's fine. I got why, sort of, the Doctor broke out quick. It, you know, we, we obviously want her to be more interactive. We don't want the companions to take up the whole episode. Um, but the, the dialogue in this episode, I think, is maybe my biggest problem. Um, the dialogue was absolutely atrocious. Like, I, I, I genuinely think I know people who could have written better dialogue than this. Um, people who are studying in films, and I know people who work in films, and I know they could have done a better job writing dialogue. I, I can't point out examples because it only aired last night, and I do not want to rewatch it to pick up examples. But there was a bit where the Doctor like, walked in the TARDIS, for example, and went, um, it can't be Daleks. Oh no, wait, it could be Daleks, but it can't be Daleks. And it's like, 
this is terrible, terrible dialogue. Half the time characters are just jumping about. I don't really understand any of the reasoning behind some characters' decisions as well. Like, Yaz, her character made no sense this episode. She was really pissed at the Doctor because it took her ten months to get back to the Companions. Which is fair enough. I'm like, yeah, I'd be pissed too. I get that. And then she goes off with Jack on her own. It's like, yeah, okay, she's giving the Doctor the cold shoulder. I get it. And then at the end of the episode, when the Doctor's like, right, should we go off on our adventures again? She's the first one who's like, yep, I'll go in. It's like... Like, you've been pissed at her for this whole ep whole episode. I don't really get why all of a sudden you're so on board with this. Um, all of the character development that Ryan had was done off screen. Um, <laughs> like, you know, his character all of a sudden has... He wants to stay on Earth, you know. He's started to have a life and he's got friends. We don't get to see it. We just get told it. He keeps bringing up his mates. He brings them up like three, four times. We don't see his mates. We don't know who they are. Uh, so any development, and you know, he talks about his dad as well. You know, it was all done off screen. Don't get to see it. So any development that was done for him was all done off screen. And uh, Joseph Cole, I think is the actor's name. He looked bored in this. He looked like he did not want to be in this episode, the actor. Um, he, I, I almost got the feeling that this guy's had enough of being in Doctor Who already. Um, I thought it was probably Bradley Walsh's decision to leave and that they thought, okay, we'll write both these characters out. But I'm, all, I'm kind of thinking that maybe... Tosin Cole had a big, bigger involvement in the decision to leave now than before. Um, Graham, um, his character had, like... I, he didn't really do anything, I don't think, in this episode. I don't think he did. I mean, he didn't do anything that stands out to me. Just had some bad, cringy lines. Um, Jack. Jack was great. He was great. It's John Barrowman, though. He's so charismatic. He was delivering some of the poor lines he had really well. Um, which is fine. He's he's a good enough actor where he can carry off bad lines, whereas, unfortunately, the other three companions aren't. Um, yeah, the prison that the Doctor was in, I actually wanted to see a lot more of that because I loved it when she was in the cell and you saw some of the aliens and stuff. It's like, okay, this is cool. I like this. I thought, where's the Jadun? The Jadun is surely watching over things. We don't get out of Jadun. And she gets out of prison really quick. Um, it's a bit of a shame because it, it just sort of all goes like that. Um, and then, of course, we bring back a character from series 11 of Doctor Who, who was in the, the Arachnids in the UK. I think it was episode four, series 11. He's like, I forget his character's name, but he's like a Donald Trump type character. And he is truly terrible in this. I don't, I think it's partially the actor's fault and then partially the dialogue, because, again, the dialogue is terrible and the actor can't carry it off. But he's so comic booky, and things he was doing just didn't make sense to me um I, I didn't really understand why he was doing some stuff in this episode it's like i don't get why our heroes decided to save him either i mean this guy has been a complete prick for two episodes now and it, it now looks like they're gonna do go further with this character because there's a little scene at the end where they talk about him running for president it's like oh my god can you not make it more clear that this character is just a rip-off of donald trump <laughs> and to be honest not much happened for like the first 40 minutes of this episode honest to god i remember we were sitting there last night my friend ryan said to me he goes how long has this been on because i felt like nothing's happened i looked at my watch it's, it was um 20 20 past seven it started at 22 seven i was like it's been on for 40 minutes and barely anything had happened eventually we get this Dalek civil war that's going to happen and I love this concept I think they did do it once in classic who I believe it was with Sylvester McCaw was it was it was it with the seventh doctor I think I think they did a civil war Dalek episode once maybe it was with the fifth doctor I can't remember um but I love this concept Dalek civil war I'm like yes this sounds fantastic you got the bronze Daleks versus the new Daleks I didn't really care what side won to be honest I was like this concept just sounds cool the Bronze Daleks show up on their ship, hundreds of them fly out across London, and you're like, here we go. We get about a three-minute scene on a bridge where 6v6, the Bronze ones just wipe them out instantly. And then we cut about five minutes later, we don't get to see none of the cool action that's going down. We get to see a couple Daleks land and shoot a few people. And that's it. And the, the, some of the people are so funny, they actually run towards the Daleks a, a couple times, and it's like... Why? Um, <laughs> and then the last, the last of the the 
black Daleks turns up on the gold, Dal the bronze Daleks um, ship and says, hey, no, look, I'm, I'm fine. I'm the one who brought you. I'm the one who saved, was trying to save the Daleks. And then he's like, I'm the last one. And the bronze ones kills him. And then it's like, oh, OK, so that's it for the Dalek Civil War. Great. It all happened. Like 90 percent of it happened off screen. Great job, great writing. The stuff that we all wanted to see, we know is happening, but we, we can't see it. Because why? we got to focus on the fam. Just um, giving us some bad dialogue, little to no character development, and trying to make jokes about beanies. That's literally what they decided to focus on instead. The episode felt very cheap as well, I want to say. There was like a scene near the start where there was meant to be some riots and this Dalek comes out and like sprays water at people. But it was all close-ups because they didn't want to afford many extras. Um, they, didn't want to, they didn't want to pay out for loads of extras. So there was loads of close-ups. It was the same when the Dalek attacked people. It was all very close-up, very quick hand-to-hand -hand camera. Um... There was a shot, a really, really weird shot where the Donald Trump character met with the Prime Minister or soon to be Prime Minister of the UK in the forest. It, it looked like a TV advert. Also, the Prime Minister of the UK, when she died, I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Um, she was like talking to the camera, like, oh, something seems to be going wrong with our machines. And then all of a sudden it pans out and there's four just coming towards her. And they've, they've gone red and they're screaming exterminate. It's like, why didn't you run like two, three minutes ago? Why have you? I, it just feels like very lazy TV making. Another good funny thing that happened, I thought, was when the Daleks were invading Earth or spreading out, they're going across London. The Doctor's like, right, they can't find me. I need to hide. So she parks the TARDIS on top of Tower Bridge. That's a great hiding place because these things are flying all over the sky and you just park the TARDIS right there. Good job. Also, I can't remember why, but there's two TARDISes in this. I don't. I can't remember where the second one come from. Maybe it's something to do with the finale of series twelve. Maybe because they're on Gallifrey, so there must have been TARDISes there. I've just chosen to forget about the finale. And the thing is, they the the the, the huge twist they done in the series twelve finale was not expanded upon at all. Here, it is still evidently clear to me that that was one of the most pointless twists in Doctor Who history to piss off fans because yeah it's a big deal they put all these regenerations in before William Hartnell but Jodie is still like I still know who I am I'm the person who's going to defeat the Daleks it's like what was the point of doing this huge um plot twist where there was loads of Doctors before William Hartnell because you're still not running with it the Doctor is still choosing to ignore this it doesn't make any sense to me like, none. Um, and then, I, 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 is that all the points I've got on the episode until we get to the two companions' exits? I don't know. Jack's exit was hilarious. Like, I love the little um, reference to Gwen from Torchwood. I thought that was really good. But it's like, we didn't even get to see Jack say goodbye. He was just on the phone to her. Like, oh yeah, I'm catching up with Gwen. I'm going to stay here for a while. See you later, Doc. It's like, we're not even going to get a goodbye? <laughs> This is lazy writing. We had 40 minutes at the start of this episode filled with pointless, useless dialogue. And because of that, we've taken away from the cool Dalek fights. We've taken away from all the great action we could have had with Jack. It's baffling to me. It is baffling the decisions they're making here. If they were doing solid character development, fine. But they weren't. They, all of the good character development happened off screen. They, we were just told about it. And I didn't believe any of, the, any of it because the actors were not good enough to pull it off. Um, so then we have the two companions exit. Um, Tosin Cole, Ryan, leaves, along with Bradley Walsh, um, playing Graham. I wanted this show to have some balls. I really wanted one of them to die. <laughs> I know that sounds morbid and horrible, but I wanted this show to show it had some balls. Like, yeah, let's kill one and we'll have the other one mourn and they've got to go off. And at one point I thought it was going to happen, right before they blew up the Dalek ship, a bronze Dalek sort of comes out, says exterminate. I thought... Bradley Walsh is going to die here. And then, boom, they teleported off. Dalek ship blows up. All the Daleks are gone. Uh, they just, Ryan just sort of says he's going to leave, which they've been teasing for the whole episode. But, you know, when we last saw him in Series 12, he was still fully on board for traveling with the Doctor. So this just all happened in one episode. Very quick, very out of blue. Um, so, yeah, you, you, I say out of blue. It was out of blue when you look at the thing in as a whole, the whole of this era of Doctor Who. For this episode, you knew it was going to be Ryan that pulled um, Graham away. 
I thought Graham's exit was actually kind of nice where he's like, no, I'd rather watch my grandson grow up. I was like, you know what, that, that's sweet. That's good. So I don't want to shit on the entire episode. There is some good aspects to this when they want to. Um, you know, I'm not just being negative for the sake of it. Uh, the last shot, you know, it ends where it started for those two. They're up on the hill and Ryan is still trying to learn his bike. And there's this really odd, odd shot of Grace coming. To, it's like there's a silhouette of her in the sunlight. And it looks hilarious. It looks terrible. I have seen YouTube videos pull off better looking shots than that. Who have no budget. They're literally just working on iMovie. I, I, I was baffled by it. I was like, what is this shot? And why is this happening? I mean, it's a nice moment. Yeah, she's sort of there with them. But do they not want to explain it? Is it just them sort of staring at the same thing? It's like, we're coincidentally having the same vision here. And the very last shot, as it does a very long pan out, is Ryan falling off his bike. And I, I cried with laughter. I thought it was so funny. Um, yeah, I know Dog 2 is not a show you should take too seriously because it's campy, cheesy, and it's meant to be fun at the end of the day. And for the most part, it is. Even in the Chipnow era, I've had episodes where I've had fun. And I'm like, that was a good time. I can get past the silliness because it's Doctor Who. As long as it's fun and the writing is competent. This was not fun. I was bored for two thirds of the episode. I then got annoyed because all the stuff I wanted to see wasn't happening. There was no cool Dalek fights. There, was no much, there wasn't much interaction with Jack and the Doctor. The only time I interacted was when they were in this weird hamster ball running around a prison. Where no one else seemed to be there while they were there. Um... I wanted to have a, a bit of a different, interesting character exit, and we didn't get it. The dialogue was just hilariously bad. Hilariously bad. And the episode felt cheap. The episode felt very cheap overall, considering this show has a budget now. We know it does. They made a huge deal about this when we went from the Moffat era to the Chipnell era. Um, I think Chipnell is... He he can write good episodes. He's had a couple good episodes throughout Doctor Who history. He has. He's done Broadchurch. Broadchurch was great, uh, especially the first season. But he is not doing a good job at all here with this era of Doctor Who. I'm sorry. I, and to the people who are watching this who actually like it, I'm sorry if I'm offending you. Um, uh, This is just my opinion. I, I'm pleased you like it. But I think Chipnall is doing a bad job. And then right at the end of the episode, we get a little teaser of John Bishop, who I actually really like, um, coming to Doctor Who. Now, I thought he was, it just says introducing John Bishop. I actually assumed at first he was going to be one of the Doctors from before William Hartnell. But apparently he's just going to be a companion now. So there were loads of complaints about the TARDIS being overcrowded. So we finally get rid of two of them and then I'm going to put someone else straight back in. I feel like the BBC, Chipnall and the whole Doctor Who team in general were just not listening to the complaints. I feel like they're just going along with the ride still. They still think they're on the Series 11 hype, but it's like, we're making something new and fresh. It's like, no, you're, you, you've messed up with Series 11. Everyone knows it. No, I, I don't think I've ever met anyone who likes Series 11 and Doctor Who. Please listen to the complaints, please, because you keep doing really silly things. And this show is becoming very unlikable for a lot of people. And I love Doctor Who. I really, really, truly do. Even though some of you are not going to believe it after this video. I love Doctor Who. This show is becoming more unlikable by each episode. I want a good episode. I don't want one that feels tacky and cheap when you have a lot of money behind it now. I want one that has competent writing and good dialogue. And I want some better actors in this, frankly. Because this is a really loved show, which is very popular. And at the minute... There is little effort going into it. Get a new composer as well. The music's just dull and boring compared to Murray Gold. Um, how offer Murray Gold a lot of money? I'm sure he'll come back. Just get an intro. Get a composer in who actually works with an orchestra. I don't like this new style of music they've gone for. It does not fit Doctor Who. Um, what am I going to give the episode out of ten? I, you know, there were there were good moments to it. Not many, but there were a few. I'll give the episode a 3 out of 10. I genuinely do not like the episode. I thought it was bad. It wasn't as bad as the Timeless Children, Child, or whatever it was called. It wasn't as bad as the Series 12 finale. But this is, I think it's one of the weaker Dog 2 episodes of the Chipnall era. Just because of the lack of 
just just uh, there was so much potential i think i'll say there was so much potential for this episode and barely anything happened it was very empty they didn't use the runtime to their advantage yeah bad episode Anyway, that's my little take on Revolution of the Daleks, guys. I, I, I'm i sorry for the people I upset, um, but hey, my opinion, and I don't care. It's my opinion. That's, I, I'm, that's what I do here. I come on here and I share my opinion. There we go. I hope you enjoyed the video as always, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave a message, and I'll see you all next time for another video. Bye-bye.